teaching the concepts of multiples and factors with color tiles. In this video, you'll see how using color tiles can help your students develop an understanding of multiplication. Many people think of multiplication as just an abstract collection of number facts to be memorized. This activity is designed to give students a visual representation of multiplication. The models will help students remember the basic multiplication facts and understand the concepts of multiples, factors, square numbers, and prime numbers. These activities use square color tiles. Sets of color tiles usually contain several different colors of tiles, but there's no significance to the colors. If you have round counters that you use for modeling sign number arithmetic, you could use those counters for these activities as well. In this activity, students will see, for example, that 3 times 4 equals 12 because a rectangle with length 3 tiles and width 4 tiles contains 12 tiles altogether. This activity gives a concrete representation of multiplication and is a good way to reinforce the basic multiplication facts. As students form a series of rectangles, summarize their findings, and look for patterns, they learn the difference between factors and multiples. And many people have never realized how the word square in 3 square, for instance, relates to shape. Once students begin to form squares with tiles, they make the connection between the numbers and the shapes. And, as a result of this activity, students will more easily identify perfect square numbers. So how can you use color tiles to model multiplication? Let's start with 12 tiles. We'll make all possible rectangles using all 12 of the tiles. Here's the first rectangle, one row of 12 tiles. 1 times 12 is 12. If we arrange our 12 tiles into two rows, each row has 6 tiles. We see that 2 times 6 is 12. We can also use our 12 tiles to make a 3 by 4 rectangle, so 3 times 4 is 12. Continuing in this way, the next rectangle has 4 rows of 3 times each. But this 4 by 3 rectangle is just a rotation of the 3 by 4 one. So we've formed 3 distinct rectangles from the 12 tiles. Summarizing our results, we see we made 1 by 12, 2 by 6, and 3 by 4 rectangles from 12 tiles. So 12 is a multiple of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are called factors of 12. When I do this activity in class, I give each student 25 tiles and ask them to make all possible rectangles for each number from 1 to 25. They summarize their results in a table like this one. For each number in the left column, all its factors are listed in the right column. We can look at the whole table to notice the difference between factors and multiples. I ask my students to list all the rectangles that have two rows, and they see from the part of the table shown here that 2 is a factor of 8, 10, and 12. Looking at the dimensions of the rectangles, they see how 8, 10, and 12 are multiples of 2. When they list all the rectangles that have three rows, they see that 3 is a factor of 9 and 12, and 9 and 12 are multiples of 3. Numbers like 11 that can form only one rectangle are prime. What about modeling square numbers? Let's make a square using these nine tiles. The square, of course, has sides of length 3. It's no coincidence that the same word square is used for the exponent in 3 squared and the shape. 9 is the square of 3, but many students never thought about it this way. We can make a square using 4 tiles. It has 2 squares on each side. 4 is 2 squared. We already made a square with 9 tiles, 3 tiles on each side. 9 is 3 squared. Could we make a square with exactly 6 tiles? Why or why not? By doing this activity, students see why 4 and 9 are called perfect square numbers, but 6 is not. Now that you've seen these activities, here are some suggestions for how you might use them with your students. For the multiples and factors activity, I give each student a set of 25 tiles and tell them to model all possible rectangles for each number. They record their results in a chart similar to the one shown on an earlier slide. Then we talk about the patterns in the table, emphasizing the terms multiple and factor. 
We also talk about prime numbers, those numbers that could only form one rectangle. For the square number activity, I give each student 50 tiles and have them work individually at first. They make all possible squares from those 50 tiles. I give them a worksheet with a chart similar to this one and ask them to draw a picture of each square and record the total number of counters and the number of counters on each side. I filled in the first couple of columns for you to see what I mean, just like I usually model the first couple of squares for my students. After they've made all the squares from 50 tiles, I pair up the students, so now each pair has 100 tiles. They continue making squares and recording their results. When most students have finished, we have a short discussion. In my classes, there's usually at least one student who has learned some math in another country. I ask these students how they say 3 squared in their language, and the exponent always relates to the shape. You can find square color tiles at teacher supply stores and catalogs. You can even use square mosaic tiles from your local home improvement store. It's also easy to make squares from paper or cardstock. The National Library of Virtual Manipulatives Geometry Strand has a pattern block activity with square color tiles and other shapes too. You use your mouse to move the tiles into the workspace where you can make rectangles and squares. This is what the NLVM pattern block activity looks like. You click on the figures on the left to make them appear in the workspace. The color palette at the bottom allows you to change the tiles from their default colors if you want. Once you've placed the tiles in the workspace, you can move them around to make rectangles or squares. This website can be used for a classroom demo of both activities covered in this video. It is also a good resource for individual student practice. I hope you will try teaching your students the concepts of multiples and factors with color tiles. This is Marianne. Goodbye.